this is not exactly what I would call a great start to a respawn hunt. A couple of mule deer bucks in this lake and just a couple of pretty small level threes, but I guess a few bucks is better than a few does, so we'll go ahead and take the better one here with the 303. And since we're going to have to go around there, we may go ahead and take the far one out as well. If we're going to be going for respawns and looking at respawns, we might as well continue to get more, or at least try to, if we have the weapon zeroed for the correct range. We managed to get that 300 meters zero and make that shot, so a little bit of tracking, but better than it could have ended up being. But earlier this week on Monday stream, we came into SRP and for the first time in a while, just pretty much shot everything we found. Every buck, every bull, just whatever we could get a shot at, we went for it. And the idea basically was to get respawns and start to hopefully see some new animals. And at least there were bucks at this lake. And like I said, they weren't that special, but we can kind of continue that trend by taking out a couple of them anyway. And go figure. There are three more bucks down at this end of the lake with a bunch of pronghorn actually drinking here as well. So just out of sight, there were a lot kind of better options. I still don't think any of them are that big, but we'll get reloaded. Because we're at the end of the lake, I think we'll be okay as far as hunting pressure to take two of them. And these two side by side should be all right. So we'll go ahead and get this guy first. And then if we can kind of recover from that shot, actually we hard shot the second one. First one I think we made a long shot on. And now we've got four mule deer bucks to claim all from just those kind of initial bit of respawns. And I wouldn't be surprised if the second couple of mule deer we shot were ones that were already at this lake and we just didn't get them the first time through because they did kind of hide back here, but good to know and good to get them for future respawns. Hunting pressure looks all good. The zone is still there. And we can go ahead and start to clean up a bit now. So. We hard shot that one. I think we dropped the very first one we shot over there on the left side. But then the two that ran wouldn't have run that far. So one I thought was laying right in here. We might need Rascal's help to find it. And the other one, since we shot it from farther, would have gone just a bit more. But there's one down there. That looks to be the gray fur type of the second one we shot here. Then we'll have to locate the other one, but not too bad. This guy is 202. I think the first one we shot is actually still going to be our biggest. But at least we got a better number of them down. I do want to know exactly what happened on our second shot here. He was still kind of just in that alert pose, so we lucked out. The 300 meters might have actually helped us in the fact that we initially missed. Because I think if he was closer, he would have taken off running earlier. And because he had that kind of 300 meter distance to, I guess, hear the shot and then start to move... We were able to get the zeroing changed and make that shot, so not the smoothest start, but got him down and then one more to claim along here before we kind of move away from this thing. We've got quite a bit of pressure here. I believe at least this guy's going to be a little bigger than the other one. At 212, he would be our best from that lake. Just kind of had that extra time there on each side, but hard shot him at 195 and kind of a good way to get in here. As long as we are getting bucks and stuff like that, I'm going to be happy to see all those new spawns. It might not have been anything huge from what we got on stream, but definitely kind of continuing what we started there. And of course, it's pretty well known. The mule deer drink time on SRP is pretty short. You can see this doe is actually leaving her zone and kind of on her way already. So we're sort of transitioning into mountain goat drink time. And that is just a level three. But I think basically a guaranteed gold. I forget exactly what gold is. It might actually be in the 80s somewhere, but that happens so often when I don't attempt hard shots on mountain goats. Somehow I end up hard shotting them, and then when I try, I can't hit hard shot to save my life. But at least we got him down. Interesting there's only one here. Every now and then, they just take forever to come down out of the mountains. It is 1030 though, so they've been drinking for quite some time. Maybe they've just kind of spawned elsewhere. We'll check another lake or two for them before their time ends, but usually there's like four or five goats here. To only see one is a little bit odd. I believe I got it kind of backwards in my head. I think I had the pronghorn gold uh, requirement in my head, so I'm going to say mountain goat should be more like 84, and then pronghorn 73 or 74 or something like that. This guy still did make gold, but yeah, it's 84.1, he was 84.9, so far from the guarantee that I initially thought he was, but... Still a big three and he still reached the gold mark, so 
That was a 300 meter heart and double lung shot, by the way. Kind of lucky that we got that. And yeah, we'll go ahead and try a couple of other spots. We shot a lot of mountain goat in the last couple of hunts over here, so hopefully there's something good waiting on us. It seems as though we have our answer to why there weren't that many goats at the last lake. There are so many males at this lake, there probably wasn't much else that could have spawned anywhere. There's two max weight estimate fours, this guy and one across with a much better estimate. I'm not sure, I guess it was that guy right there. It's still the smaller horn, so no chance of being a level four diamond, but we'll try to get a couple of these guys. I think if we reload, we ought to be able to get two out of this kind of herd that's to our left. And then we'll try to get the one all the way across. So we want that guy there, and then I think that's a decent size three. That's actually a four there. So maybe if we can time this right, the second level four head is head down. I don't know if maybe we hit the three. The shots at the four just did not go to plan. So one thing Mountain Goats will often do is kind of run and stop like that one just did. I don't know if they do it when they're hit though. So we may need to try to get a shot at him. He's dropping. Now he must have hit him like in the vertebrae or just somewhere where it is going to take him down. We'll see if we can somehow manage something. I mean, when he's doing all that, actually he went alert. Got our chance to get a shot in there and get the full metal on him. Not too sure how that even works, but not going to complain. And yet again, just trying to get a long shot. Somehow managed to hard shot him, so we got the three level fours at this lake. There's still mountain goat just running everywhere, but I think especially after the fact that we struggled so hard in the second one, we'll just kind of call that good. And yet again, I want to know what happened on the initial shot there. It was a flesh hit. I think we kind of just got a little bit unlucky. It seems like he's sort of maybe lifting his head from drinking. I think that is when we took that shot. And there's just kind of too much neck flesh that we had to shoot through. And the 303 round couldn't reach all the way down there into a vital. So at least we did get the vital hit and got the gold. This is going to be one of our two max weight estimate fours. And then I'm kind of curious what the other one's going to score. This guy had a very low estimate. 90.3 for him. I mean, that's only... Man, it must be because he's got those uneven horns. That's only six above gold as a max estimate uh, goat. That's not something that happens super often. They're usually a little higher scoring. But then I think what is going to be our best mountain goat thus far, at 102.2, a 357 meter hard shot. I swear it's just when, I don't know when I'm not trying, somehow the shots just end up there. Not bad, but yeah, decent sized goat and go figure. The one shot that we just sort of went for and ended up hitting the target. So it's basically the end of mountain goat drink time now. I think we're gonna go up into this area. We can look for mountain goats and then there may be elk or something else hanging around. Well, there are mountain goats, but I think there are also potentially mountain lions. And I'm not too sure, just because we got the crosshairs on it, let's go ahead and take a mule deer before we lose all of these opportunities. There are actually, for whatever reason, two mountain goats still kind of chilling. If one of them will turn broadside, somehow the other level two doesn't even know. We can hit that guy and bring him down. At least we'll kind of get something for our trouble here. I don't know where the mountain lion is. It's got to be on the left side because the bighorn don't know anything is going on. It's an unfortunate thing about the placement of this tower. I use it to kind of reduce the hunting pressure of shooting all the goats, but it doesn't have the best visibility across there. And I just don't see any side of it. I've got a tent over on that side. Maybe it'll run by, maybe we'll get tracks or at least have some indication, but I don't really know other than just running around and spending a bunch of time looking for it. It's gotta be close. I think I hear it. Somewhere on our left, I can hear Rascal kind of growling. I'm not all that worried about it. That's what I was going to say. I didn't want to spend a bunch of time looking for it because it is just a mountain lion and we've got a bunch of rares and diamonds for them, but it would have been nice to know what we were working with. But our kind of bonus mule deer buck that was just standing there was a 190.9. I mean, not too bad for a level three that we really had no intention of actually taking. And then the level two mountain goat, I know we double lunged him, so he shouldn't have gone very far. Might get Rascal to help us here. It is all of those things where it can just kind of be a time save to have your dog help that I find them to be sort of the most useful, but 
it wasn't a double lung shot, he was moving forward. Ended up being lung and stomach. We already praised him, and maybe we'll give him a treat for helping us. I did see, since we fast traveled and kind of got moved away, there was another goat over there. It's a level 3. Actually, level 2 male as well. We might kind of leave them go. Maybe we can hit 3 since he's out there a little more by himself, but I don't want to cause too much hunting pressure. That should be enough to bring him down, so we'll just take the one and call it good. We don't have a tripod or tower or anything like that over here. Wait. Did I shoot two mountain goats here? A hard shot. Okay, so Kyla was up here earlier, and I don't know if she shot this one. I don't remember shooting that. Or did I? I don't even know. I know we shot this one, standing by himself. I was looking at the hunting pressure there. Yeah, that was the one that I shot. Did you shoot a mountain goat? <laughs> Is it dead? Yeah, you are, you are shot it. I don't think I shot one here. Up at this lake, where the elk were? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't feel like tracking it. <laughs> I was like, tracking it? It was, you dropped it. Oh. Well, I didn't go get it then. I see. <laughs> I was so confused. I started just shooting everything as I was moving. Well, so clearly you're doing well. Love it. No worries. I was looking at that and wondering, like, why there was so much hunting pressure there. It seemed like there was too much. And that's something I've been kind of doing on the mountain goat grind is making sure I don't cause too much pressure and then when it gets kind of high, going down into this area and going after pronghorn, one of the nice things about them on SRP is that you don't really have to hunt them in their drink times because they feed all throughout the day and really almost anywhere down here in the plains, you can run around for a couple of minutes and run into them. So maybe we can clear a bit of that with a pronghorn or two. I would say a herd like this will do just fine, especially with a level one buck in there. It's also got a decent sized one at a level four, but let's reload. I don't think we're gonna shoot three, but on the off chance that we get the opportunity, we might. And I think we actually might go for the level one first. So I want the four to have his head down to feed. I don't know what that animation was. Kinda odd that he did it that way, but now that he's done that, we'll take the one. We can hit the four. Ooh, okay. I don't think we got a vital hit there. I'm not sure how we didn't get that, but that'll work to bring him down. Good thing we did reload. And we ended up getting all three. I actually didn't even look at the level of the third one, but level one, level four, and something else in there as well. I want to say we shot like a 32 or something level one at some point in the recent past, so that's not going to be a Hall of Shame addition, but I always try to go for those little tiny bucks just kind of to see what the antlers look like. Or I guess, in this case, what the horns look like. I'm gonna say this is our guy, considering I still couldn't see him getting that close. 42. I wonder if I had that wrong, because he's 44.00 kg, which does make me wonder if he could be minimum weight. We'll tax him, I mean, it's not like we're, you know, lack money. It only costs 2,500 to do so, so we can delete that trophy if it's needed. This was the one that we kind of shot on the run. He was just a level 2, and we got unlucky that he ducked. We almost just shot him straight in the neck, though. Would have been interesting. And then our level 4 at 82 score gold. But you can see how hunting pronghorn can work not only really quickly for getting hunting pressure, but shooting them, you can get a bunch and get a bunch for respawns. And I don't know if it was shooting pronghorn for kind of clearing pressure reasons or if it was shooting them for Monday's stream and just getting respawns that caused this. But... We came out here for Friday's live stream, kind of to check on the response that we got from the original hunt, and had one of the coolest moments in quite some time, just kind of out here hunting and going for pronghorn. Different- oh, hello. Wow. Wow. Level 5 pronghorn, let's go see what that guy looks like. He's up to 107, so optimistic, I would say. Where'd that fella go? That's him right there. What the heck? There's two. Uh, listen. This is a big one. Like a really big one. I don't know about that one. Double? What gun do I have? The 303? It's doable. Alright. 
We're going to go from this range so we're not too close. And I think we'll shoot the one that I believe is going to be higher scoring first. We want this guy's head to be down. Ideally, this guy's head would be up, but they are feeding, so they don't do a whole lot of that. Is he going to? Yeah. Ooh. Got him. Wow. Cool. Wanted to drop them both. That would have been cool if they were dead side by side, but didn't have the M1. I think this would be potentially my first really big one. If this is the set of horns that I think it is. Let's see. That eh, 100.2. They're not quite. It's probably the fact that they curve in, though. All right, that's one. Can we get two for two making diamond? I don't know what set of horns this guy had. They might have been mismatched. Are they? I think so. Hey. Two out of the same herd. This guy's a little wonky looking. It's kind of in a realistic way, though. Like, they're just twisted to look a little bit different. Pretty pleased with that. So, one of those pronghorn did actually make it into our main lodge. And because of that, we're going to go ahead back and take a look. And it's one that I think usually scores even higher than it ended up. It just happened to be a little bit of a unique one, but in my mind that makes it even just a little bit cooler. And it was kind of interesting. I did intend to put this guy in the lodge anyway, but at 100.2, he actually bested the one we had here by exactly 0.1. We had a 100.1 sitting in this spot, but I think this is kind of like the big horns for Bronghorn, but they curl in so much instead of outwards that it keeps the score down around 100 instead of up by like 103 or 104. But I like it. He actually happens to be next to a couple of unique kind of racks. The white tail we have him by is, he's got that like right antler that sort of flares out and up. And then the mule deer, I wouldn't say he's necessarily unique because he's uneven, but I don't at least myself see a lot of those sort of brow tines almost touching racks for them. So he's at least a little bit unique, at least in what we tend to find. Then a droopy time mule deer out here as well, but really cool to see the two diamonds in one herd. I'm trying to think back to the last time that happened. I think we did it with reindeer on Medved sometime maybe about a year ago. I don't know if those, I, I want to say the pie balls that are in this multi mount over here were shot on that day. So we could kind of see when that was. And assuming that was the last time, we could get a decent idea of when. Yeah, maybe like a year and a half ago, April of 2020. I know there were the two pie balls were in the same hunt, but I think we killed two diamond reindeer in that hunt. And there may have been two diamond K buffalo at one point. I kind of remember that, but I don't know exactly when that was. Seeing two, maybe less common diamonds than reindeer and K buffalo in the same herd with the pronghorn, I thought that was pretty cool. And to do it live on stream, that was a neat thing that we've never done before and cool to accomplish as well. But anyway, I think that is officially going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.